So just scrying the aether of pop, had to make the call three times, three plus times. I think I had to restart partway through. So I'm feeling a whirling about me and I'm seeing myself tumbling forward as it were with somersaults. And these two feelings are combining and I'm seeing the sense of a, a cone and then a um, cylinder. So we are having uh, some combining of these two ideas. And I'm being told that if you were to take sections or if you were to take a true cone, flip it, take another, the reverse cone, flip it, and have them come down, you would get the same sort of uh, from a 2D perspective, the same look of what an uh, octahedron might look like if you rotated it the correct way, and that um, and that the tumbling forward, again, this is that same idea of if you were to have that cylinder come all the way around to form a torus and then change the parameters so that it degenerates is the phrase, into a sphere, then what would happen is um, you sort of are getting at these 3D representations of, or uh, combining these ideas into creating similar looking um, solids. So just staring into this briefly a little bit, I'm thinking about how this might relate. So I'm being told to really focus on this idea of the heart of the entire um, universe in which, you know, one is, one appears, if you could imagine that as a sphere, and then from the outside of that, in this realm of Adam Kadmon, God allowing certain lights to show up, sort of behaving a bit like a compass, but not necessarily quite perfectly so, but so the whole idea is that, so getting back to the idea of an octahedron and a sphere, this is sort of getting at the same idea of platonic solids where they take up, where they have regular faces, all the, si all the faces of that solid are the same, and ideally a sphere is, and a sphere is also the, almost like the ideal of all of these, right, where you could, um, for example, a dodecahedron is closest to a sphere because it's vol by volume, it's closer to a sphere than the other for platonic solids. But at any rate, the idea here is, is that we as people are trying to orient ourselves, if you could think of us geometrically, right? You know, we are, we're in this world of three dimensions and we're trying to arrange ourselves and align ourselves so that we are in line with the per with the perfection of the divine, right? And so we don't do that by turning ourselves around because if let's say you, you hit dead center of a sphere, you're okay. So really the whole idea is to hit dead center so that, you know, the there's no um, imbalance of volume based on the rest of the space that you take up. And this would hold if you were to look at higher dimensions as well for a hyper octahedron in a hypersphere and so on and so forth. So this is what I'm being told. So, um, so there's an extension here from 3D, from potentials within 3D, you know, so you get, you go from like a basic cylinder into a different shape just by changing the parameter. But I'm also being shown that um, you're, you can also take an extension from, for example, a cone, which also has, you know, the circular part, and you can find yourself shifting from that into something that's much more like a, a platonic solid, for example, with the octahedron, um, just by changing perspective and what it is you think you're actually looking at. All right, so that was a, a highly geometric... <laughs> vision. So, but bearing with that, um, so what does this have to do with the heart? That's always the thing I try to take it back to. 
um, just so that I can understand it. So the, the emotion of this, not just the, the interesting visuals and the, the, the intellectual meaning, but the, the emotional feeling comes in with that as well. So just feeling into this. So I've had a couple of times uh, over the last couple of days of visions where there's this pressing, this feeling of the heart almost. And the heart itself, I'm being told, is like a sphere. And that we're trying to interact in the world using, you know, we, these metaphors of geometry are sort of like how we're trying to interact with the world. So, for example, the octahedron has to do with our attempt to be balanced across various facets of our life. Um, but at the same time, how does one align oneself and one's life with that with the divine? And it's tough because, you know, we, too, we do get vibrated by life and we have to, our attention changes and it's, it's all of that. And to a degree, we have to accept that. But also, you know, it makes us long for be a simple return to the divine. And frankly, in a lot of ways, we're longing for our life to return to, to the, the perfect homeostasis, as it were, right? It's just natural biology for lack of a, to oversimplify a little bit, but um, especially for those of us who are sensitive. So if you're too hot, you want to be able to cool off. If you're too cold, you want to warm up. Um, if you're hungry, you want to eat, but you don't want to eat so much that you get sick and all of that idea. So, yeah, so just feeling into this a little bit more. Um, so the sense I'm getting is, is that just checking out what's going on here. I'm asking the governors and my holy guardian angel to orient myself here. So now I'm seeing, it's as if I'm in a cube remembering that the cube is a dual to the octahedron mathematically. So it's like I'm seeing the six faces of a cube and each one of them is having like a story play upon them. So in the, as, in the sense that I am working to, to maintain a balance within like a regular 3D landscape in the sense of like, you know, the different facets of my life. There's also facets of the world where certain stories are being played. So this relates back to the noontime visions, uh, vision of um, certain fixed stars appearing in a constellation and us trying to make sense of that. The analogy I was given was like the, the seven sisters of the Pleiades suddenly the idea of that fixed constellation and that story that existed before then, that changed because suddenly there are only six. Going down from six, seven sisters to six, we need a new story about what happened to that other sister. So, so the analogy here to that is, is important for our purposes, but what I'm sensing is, is that these different faces of the of the cube are representing different stories from different constellations that we're all trying to balance whether individually or collectively or just keeping our minds in that idea of a story based on looking at a certain for example segment of the sky you know you could tell have myth, myths about constellations right but they're bound to this square or they're bound over here to this square. Now, obviously the sky isn't, you know, square, but you get the idea that there's a segment, a part of it that we block off and that we see the constellation in. So in looking at this, what I'm noticing is that if you could imagine each of these different stories sort of competing around us, then it's going to be difficult for us to reconcile our own hearts, our own needs, our attempt to live a balanced life um, with the, the perfection of the, the infinite divine, you know, surface area almost of the sphere. I know it's not infinite, but 
the route one could could travel upon the surface of a sphere, let's put it that way, is infinite. Um, so, so in looking at these different stories, it's like we're trying to reconcile how we are with a greater collective of stories that, you know, themselves may be shifting subtly depending on any number of circumstances, right? So, and the analogy I was given in the noontime reading was that as we are working through our issues and we're, we're purifying obscurations, to use that B Buddhist term, clean, clearing them out or clearing them up so that you can see through them clearly, it's like uh, these things which were a fixed star or fixed point for us to look up at, it's almost as if that star doesn't go out, but it sort of like pops and then um, it sort of is integrated into the rest of the sky. So like a star, if you imagine it going out, but not going out so much as dissolving into the sky. So just trying to like really concentrate and bring this point home. Um, as we go through these phases as humanity, right, where suddenly something is no longer as important to us. As that happens, then the entire story shifts. The entire story that we had in front of us shifts around us. So it'd be like if you're watching a, a story play out on one of these faces of the sphere, like a TV screen, and then you cut from one scene to another, where suddenly things have resolved, or for whatever reason, whatever story that is, the thing, the conflict is resolved on the story then suddenly the way that you are relating to that story suddenly needs to, you need to figure out how to change that and you need to like reorient yourself in 3D. Now, when that happens, that doesn't mean that suddenly you are knocked out of this perfect alignment with the divine, but it may feel that way because you don't know which way is up. So that was a very long-winded way of getting at um, an analogy of... Well, that was a long way of getting at the geometric equivalent of what's going on. But I think it's important. And I think it speaks to the human condition where we're trying to start with one thing, but we have a difficult time adapting to change. And and how we... And, and also, our if our entire story or narrative or sense of identity gets thrown out of whack then it's harder to hang on to things and maybe it's okay to be able to let certain things go and to just be more accepting but regardless just being more accepting isn't quite enough either to say that's what the message of this is because really you're doing a lot you're um you're trying to trying to figure out what is right. And if that suddenly changes, that's hard. And that's why I think a lot of, it seems like a lot of change needs to happen because older generations need to die off to allow for new ways of thinking. But getting back to what the angels are trying to show me here, I wanna be sure not to have too much of my own commentary. So, so okay, so the main thing, now I'm seeing like a, um, a pentagram before me and I'm at one of the arms or what have you and it's like I'm seeing there's this shifting uh, across the um, uh, it's like I'm seeing myself sort of at the center and I need to I'm looking at the points all around me of these various arms of the pentagram or points of the pentagram and just sitting here and being calm for a moment, it's like there's a real, there's a real attempt to, so I'm seeing a, a point above me and it's almost like I'm seeing like a point above me and then the five points about me are actually an alignment of the lower half of the octahedron. And the it's it's there's a lot going on with this so 
the main thing I'm being shown here is that, okay, so when a point goes away, when a, when an, uh, when a, a fixed point goes away, so that our the symbol on the screen in front of us, you know, changes changes and shifts. What I'm seeing here is that this is that we can always through this rotation. So for example, going from, you know, six points to five or, or what have you, or seven points to six, you can actually shift a little bit and suddenly you get a nice new geometric configuration that was always available when you did reorient. And so that sort of rotation and work to go through when it comes to shift, for example, a grief or um, just realizing something's less important to you or more important or loss or gain or what have you, there's always this opportunity for one's entire perspective to change and to get completely rebalanced and to honor everything as best you can. So it does take time. It's not without effort and all of that and without difficulty, but that's okay. You know, it's, it's part of the work that is to be done. So, okay, I think that was the main thing that they were trying to show me and they wanted to give me like yet another metaphor so I didn't get too lost in my own commentary. So I think that's it. So that's ends the vision.